to the Saray Show Live, where we control our own narratives and have the conversations that we need to have in order to empower our community. I am your host, Mr. Saray. I'm your co-host, Yana. All right, and we about to get started, but first, I had such a long week, like, <laughs> this week for me has just been a mess. What's going on? What's been going on? How was your sleep. week? It's this past exhausting. week. exhausting. I don't feel like I got enough sleep. And yeah, between work and school and kids, I just be tired. Yeah. See, I had a different struggle this week. I had jury duty majority of the Ooh. week. Have you ever served jury duty? No, I have not. Fortunately, nobody I know has <laughs> served jury duty. They've My always mom they, has it like next month sometime. But I feel like she had it before, but they didn't like she didn't actually do it. Like she yeah. was there and then she got sent home. So yeah. I've never even been summoned, as far as I'm concerned. I yeah, know. I've been summoned twice. I went once and. Unfortunately, I was juror number one, so the likelihood of me getting picked was like high. So I got picked. I did it for three days. I mean, I mean, what was the what was the case? It was it was the guy who was charged with some assault, some. Oh, uh, it, was, it was a it was a little. I don't know how much I can say. Yeah, oh, right. I mean, I know they say you can discuss it after it's over, but still. I like, mean, well, if you're not putting his personal, like you didn't yeah, say his okay. name, like I mean, so it was like first and second degree assault, reckless endangerment, and uh. Yeah, but it was really nothing. But but I said that I mentioned jury duty to say to people, you know, I know people hate it, but don't skip out on it because I wanted to lie so bad and say, you know, if they're black, they're innocent. <laughs> Just to get out of it, but you can't get out of it because I didn't do that. No, I'm saying he did it. He wasn't black. No, did he do it? Though? He did. I don't think he did. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think he did based on the because you can only go off of the evidence, right? Yeah, okay. So and based on the evidence, be hard though to like completely remove any sort of bias or personal opinion it's not from it. To, like, me, I feel like I could be like, especially when you get in those cases where it's like somebody presents something and then they say, oh no, you got to strike that from the record or something. It's like, but yeah. I already heard it. What you mean? So, like, yeah, we didn't get too much of that, but yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. But it's, of course, it has your biases when you're thinking about, did he do that or did she do that? But when it comes down to making a decision, Based on the evidence, it's not hard to just right. say. Right, if it's, not, if it's any kind of doubt, then right. you can't say that. It was one person in there who was just like, I just feel like he did it. And we was like, like the, you can't do that. You can't do that. She was talking about her heart and all this stuff. We was like, that don't matter. Girl. Yes, I'm so serious. Okay. And that's how some people be in jail right now. Who because didn't of somebody's do anything. heart. Because of someone's heart. Somebody's bad. You have heart. to be kidding me. <laughs> I didn't know that stuff. Well, I knew it really happened, but... I, it was just beyond me to witness it firsthand. Yikes. But definitely do, if you get some, it's due jury duty because we always talk about the injustices. You know, they left Philando Castile's murderer off, you know, um, because, you know, these juries, they have biases and uh, fortunate, unfortunately, they are against usually black people. So you want to make sure you do your, you know. Due diligence. Do your due, due diligence and just do jury duty. I mean, especially if you have a regular job where you can get that pay. Right. Me. And get I was all. afraid. Like, like, I was afraid that it was la- it would last long, like into Thursday or Friday, you know, some of my busiest days in right. the shop. So I was like, oh my God, please let this oh, be yeah, over. Getting all for it. Let me tell you. <laughs> It's, it was it was fun. I mean, oh, fun yeah. as it came. I'm willing to do my jury duty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely do jury duty though. But um, to get into this topic, um, today's topic is is Black feminism, aka Shea Butter Twitter. Mm-hmm. Any AKAs? Any other AKAs? Um, I mean, <laughs> no. Like that. <laughs> okay. So the Not Black feminism. Nice one. Right, so black feminist is black feminism, aka Shea Butter Twitter, holding us back as a community, as a black community. Um, I tried to find some black feminists where y'all at. I don't know. I think a lot of people be closet feminists because they be out there in the march wearing the t shirts and holding up the cute little signs. Feminists, right? But I could not find a black feminist to come on here. It's probably like for the best. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, we I just feel like, I mean, yes and no, just my experience with it. Now, let me not like, you know, completely encompass yeah. this group, you know, this entire group into yeah. these, these, you know, handful of traits. But my personal experience with Shea Butter Twitter is trash. 
bitch. Like, it's yeah. just, it's, I could hardly call this, like, feminism. Like, yeah. it's even down to the silliest things, like, you don't want to be referred to as female. It's all but And I'm like, yeah. what? I don't you're, understand that. It's, I don't like, understand you're, that. You're a female. Maybe they don't want to have That's labels. That's not even, like, species specific though that are like no i'm a human being and i'm, I'm like what are you you okay what, what, no yeah this is what you are this is yeah but when you go check that do you create a whole nother box in the column when you fill no. it on paper no, no you're you gonna don't. check that f right and keep it moving you're not gonna x the whole thing out and just be like human. i'm myself Please. human like f out of here can we just not like <laughs> yeah so so let's just set the record straight i mean are you a feminist uh, I feel like that's a little more black and white than I could really, you know, categorize myself because I mean I'm all about gender equality, but oh, yeah. I can't necessarily you... say I'm a feminist person. I mean I'm you know I'm all here for you know yeah for for the ladies, but I feel like that definition is like a wee bit subjective. So well, I'm definitely not. Like a I, I do believe in some of the things, right? That, some of the some, ideals yeah. of it, like traditionally, yes. But I can't say that I'm just out here like being a feminist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the first thing is, what is a feminist? And basically, from what I gather, feminist is just a group of people who seek, you know, equal rights for women. Right. Yeah. Do you would agree on that? Okay. So, but what it really, I mean, okay, so feminism, the feminist movement has like th three waves. Um, currently, we're in the third one. The second one was in the 60s, and the one before that was in the, the either the very early 1900s or the late 1800s, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, um, but in reality, what I understand about feminism is that it's, it's a fight for equality for white women. White women started the feminist movement, and they still really don't do anything for black women today as far as the feminist movement is concerned. Honestly, to be honest, they weren't really doing too much for themselves. It's just, they just wanted to be as harmful as white men were being, to be honest. Like, it was under the guise of that equality, but realistically, you're being just as harmful as them because, like mm -hmm. you say, you're not fighting for all females mm -hmm. or women's rights you're fighting for your individual rights and your you know racial demographic yeah. really so yeah it's really making just, you just as bad as your male counterparts to be honest well yeah they just wanted to be equal to them that doesn't mean um that they wanted to be more fair or more just or whatever they just wanted to be equal to their men and they really didn't even bring black women into the equation till the second wave, which was in the 60s around the civil rights movement. Right. And basically what that did was remove some of the women from the civil rights movement and worry about the feminist movement. They kind of just try to, you know, jump on a bandwagon. Like, okay, if we gonna get some movements done, we better get it before the niggas. Right. That was really how that movement came about. They got black women in there for numbers. They really didn't do, they, even to this day, what do they do for black women? You know, um, even back when they were uh, fighting for votes, right? For women to vote, the right, right. of women to vote. Um, back when uh, Frederick Douglass was fighting for black people to have the right to vote, what was her name? Uh, Susan B. Anthony, who's known to be one of the most iconic feminists. Uh, let me quote her, because I wrote down a quote mm. of hers, because I wanted to make sure y'all know the root of feminism. Yeah, if you're a, a feminist, a black feminist, I want you to know the root of where feminist, exactly. feminism came from. If you so... Like I know where you're going. Yes. Okay, so this is a quote from um, Susan B. Anthony. She says, I will cut off this right arm of mine before I will ever work or demand the ballot for a Negro and not a woman. So, like, if she said, so, so, but, but basically, some Negroes are women. Okay, so that shows you right there, though. They My not, life. when they talk about the women's movement, they ain't talking about no right, black women. They talking about y'all. Exactly, y so they shouldn't alone. just say white women. Why don't you just say white women? Because you're not talking about women. Because you're not talking about Negro women. Because you can't say that in the 60s and beyond. That's not politically correct. And that's how you get the job is aimed at your head. So, but then but you make a statement like that overtly like that, which yes. pretty much you might as well go ahead and just say it for white women. I mean, that probably would have been a little softer. Right. 
than uh, you willing to cut off your arm before you advocate for black votes. Pumpkin, like, okay. Right, so, right. so basically, they, she said that, you know, give us our rights as white women. Don't you dare give them to niggas before you give them to us. Right. So where is the com- the whole sisterhood camaraderie with right. the black women? I don't cohesion understand. Cohesion between the races because it was never for us. Like most things in exactly. this country were exactly. never for us. We just got exactly. it. Exactly. So, okay. So today's feminism. <laughs> <laughs> what does that consist of? Um, oh, what shenanigans. The- yeah. Um, a whole lot of... Uh, unresearched uh, non-basis having arguments um, that are very (laughs) unsubstantive. They don't have any substance Mm -hmm. or any background to them. Um, I mean, to be honest, I I rarely see, and I mean like rarely to the point where I probably couldn't even like cite you one individual by name that is actually productive in that way and that is you know, educated on the history and that sticks with the facts. Yeah. Like, it's always just like, it's not really feminism, it's just man bashing. Mm-hmm. It's really what I what I see, it's man bashing, like plain yeah. as day. It's like, I'm just combative to men. That doesn't make you a feminist, that makes you salty. Yeah, salty, <laughs> among other things, it makes you bitter and it yeah. makes you, you know, like someone with too much idle time because yeah. who has time for that? But I don't see a whole lot of actual like that actual fight for gender mm-hmm. equality and not consistent even when I do see it yeah. because it sounds good to say oh yeah you know well, women we're just as good as men and we want this and we want this and the same as you guys but then you want to have these fake traditional right. background values like well the men should pay for this and exactly. I shouldn't have to pay for that yeah. and I'm just like you do know that you kind of can't do both like it's, right. those gender roles that were established since you know, the beginning of time eons ago <laughs> they have those stipulations to them to where you can't it can't be you can't be new school and old school at the same right. time it's going to be one or the other but when people talk about that talking about their men you know oppressing them or whatever the feminist movement that's how you know it's a white woman's movement because our men don't have the power to oppress us like their men have the power to oppress them. Right. So what are we what are we fighting our men for in the feminist movement if they don't have any control on our oppression? Right. It's like uh, that's kind of like a blind. Right. Like, it's, it's like what you can't. We're in the same boat, sort of. And and, and as black people, yeah, absolutely. And then honestly, I mean, demographically, we kind of doing better than them. So as far as, as far as black men go, as far as like, you know what I'm saying? Like we're getting more, like, you know, black women are excelling in a whole That is true. We are like the growing, most growing entrepreneurs in the country. And the highest demographic for for higher education. So it's like, we're out here with, you know, very high levels of education, sometimes more so higher than our men. So it's just like, you're not really oppressing us when we're kind of opening the door for more opportunities for us yeah but it's like like you said to like attack them when they don't really they're not in the position to like to oppress us that's that's bad right it's like and i feel like you can't elevate black women or fight for a black women's movement and leave our men behind because after all they're the leaders of the family so right if they're fucked up and we're doing all this good that still doesn't mean much for our community as a whole you know right what I'm because if we don't have like that's how you continue the black family yes we don't have the black men behind us or supporting us or beside us whatever you want to call it right how are we going to continue forward with the with the black family we're isolating black men we cannot get into that westernized you know we can't jump into a fight that the white women are having with their men. We just can't jump into a fight because you 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 might end up getting knocked the fuck out. <laughs> Let's be clear on that. If you jump into a fight, you just can't jump out there. Worry about your own, you know. That That's how I feel about Take it. Take it at home first before you try to conquer the world. I'm, I'm okay. Sorry. I mean, as far as... I don't even know what the agenda is. I looked it up. I, it was just a bunch of women just basically complaining about stuff but basically what i think that the agenda is is for equal pay which white black women don't even make statistically on average uh the same as white women 
Anyway, so you're fighting for a, a gender equality in the workforce, and we ain't even making the same as other women. We haven't even leveled the playing field amongst other women, let alone exactly. <laughs> so, other genders. So equal pay, pro, being pro-choice, you know, able to get abortions and birth control, whatever. Um, freedom, I guess, according to Amber Rose, freedom to be sluts and put your <laughs> vagina on Instagram without being judged. That's not a strong, that's not, that's not productive for us. That's not, fighting for that stuff when black people don't have simple human rights. Right. That it it's is. Not, it's like, I, it's like I get it. I do get it to a certain degree because at the end of the day, I mean, I totally understand it. Like, it's like, you have one life to live, live your life. It's like, these yeah. men do whatever they want to <laughs> do. And it's, you know, no one bats an eyelash, mm-hmm. but you know, God forbid a woman, you know, show anything. Publicly, and it's like you know, harlot. You know, you got the scarlet letter. But I don't fuck with that vagina photo. Yeah, that I want to denounce that because I don't fuck with that. Yeah, that was, I think that was a bit extreme. Yeah, and I don't, the I don't aspect fuck with that of the way when you when you put something on the internet, you've lost it forever. Right, it's gone. That's it. And you she have gets no paid control for that. over it. She gets endorsed, and, and you're she somebody's paid. mom, yeah. especially. So that's particularly disturbing for me because I feel like your son is going to grow up and see these things and you know like uh, whether you feel like it's right to have consequences for your actions or not there are consequences for your actions and then it trickles down into your offspring right so you know Amber Rose doing it is one thing but don't do the Amber Rose challenge and you she's already set in her career she's established what she does makes money that will make but money this is what you. she's famous for and though she because she for. was a dancer and then you started dating celebrities so it's just like this is this nudity mm-hmm. thing is nothing new it's to nothing her. new but don't but copy for that. us, unless yeah. you're going to that avenue where you're trying to get into the, the stripping game mm-hmm. or, you know, stripping your way to dating athletes, at the end of the day, you still have, like, career ambitions, I would like absolutely. to assume, and Hopefully. those things can absolutely hinder you when somebody runs you through the Google mm-hmm. real quick, and your poom poom is all over the place. It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, nah, you, I'm pretty sure you're not a good representation of this company. Whether, yeah. no matter how qualified you are, you can easily void yourself out of a whole lot of things by not thinking things through under the guise of, oh, it's wrong to slut shame. Which, I mean, hey, if you... I mean, I can understand that logic. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I feel like people could definitely, you know, benefit strongly from minding their own business. Yeah. But, um... At the same time, it just kind of is what it is. It's just like, this is just, some things just exist the way they are. And whether it's unfortunate or not, like situations like that, people are always going to have something to say. It's no matter how many walks you do, they're always going to have something to say. I guess what she's trying to do is like turn the word slut into a positive and take the negativity out of it. But for me, I mean, that's all fine. First of all, that that shouldn't even be black women's focus because, be clear, Amber Rose doesn't identify as a black woman. She clearly right. states, even though her mom is black, whatever, she clearly states that I'm not a black woman. So she, we shouldn't even be doing what she's doing anyway. Right. That's first and foremost. But just publicly speaking about the whole that much nudity online, I just don't fuck with it, especially in the sense of you're not making money from it if you're not Amber Rose. And it's just a bad look. You can't do stuff like that and expect people to respect you. That just when is you're not is. when when you're not getting the respect that you're doing when you're not doing that. So adding that to the pot is really not helping. But it's just a, a classic example of us as black people worry about the wrong shit, to be yeah. honest. Like that's really not you know, that's piss poor prioritizing. Like yeah. that's at the least of our words is worrying about slut shaming. Who cares? Like we're not gonna turn slut into the new nigga, you know what no. I'm saying? It's just it I don't I don't be. foresee that happening. Like that was a totally different circumstance mm-hmm. where you just completely took control over that word and its meaning and everything like that. I don't feel like that's gonna happen for slut. So I feel like I at the end of the day we have bigger things to worry about as right. far as rights and, you know, elimin- el- eliminating different stigmas about us. That's the least of the worries because right. that's universal. That's mm-hmm. not you know what I'm saying? Any any race can be you know, labeled a slut. It's other right. things that we have to worry about that are specific to our race that we're not giving nearly enough really attention like because being overshadowed by stuff like this. I just feel like um, today's feminism, just to sum it up, for black women, so black feminism today just, for me, continues the Willie Lynch syndrome. You know, from slavery because Willie Lynch, you know, part of the whole thing with the Willie Lynch, you, can, you guys can Google that and look that up for yourself, but part of it was to separate the black men from the black women to pit them against each other and i feel like that is today what black feminist 
feminism is because white women are uh, are specifically putting themselves against the black I mean the white one uh, men to gain equality or whatever but in turn that makes us turn against our men for right. no you're reason. emulating that and and that's it doesn't it doesn't yield the same results because white men are typically you know the master oppressor right. that we want to be quite yeah. frank so it's like for us to turn against our old men is completely counterproductive because it's not accomplishing anything it's, and it's really just not breaking down the black community I will never be a feminist. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just start my statement by saying that. Very I mean, clear and concise. never will I be a feminist. And this is why. Um, even if it changes, even if feminism starts to bring in black women, which I don't foresee that happening in no future, um, it's because of the history. You know, like... Like, would you would you ever join the KKK if the say the KKK decides that you know okay we're not going to you know burn crosses and lynch black people and we're not going to go off of those values anymore we're going to give people scholarships and we're going to you know do things nice in the community would you ever join the KKK no the history no because of the that. history yeah. So that's the same reason why we're never to black people. So why would I be a part of that? You don't go join the ops because they decided to, you know, to change up, mellow it out a little bit. Like, so that's the reason why I'll never be a feminist. But one of the one of the uh, one of the more popular feminists in in the movement was Margaret Sanger, the creator of Planned Parenthood. Oh God! And we all know that. And you can Google several oh, quotes, the ridiculously several ridiculously racist quotes. She was that so come racist, this woman, and she created Planned Parenthood to with the intention to hate the black race. It was she all wanted about to eliminate us, getting rid of us, right? By giving us means to stop our procreation, to, to, right? Like, that was the to whole kill our babies, behind it, to sterilize our women and men, and keep us from getting pregnant in the first place. That was the exactly. whole logic behind it. Exactly. And she has admitted to this. You can Google this. I don't have time to be pulling up all her quotes when you could do that yourself. Just know, it's tragic. Just know that she, she, Margaret Sanger was the one of the main, mind you, Hillary Clinton's, she was, she said that was her idol. I was say that was her man. <laughs> and she is a eugenics freak herself, Hillary Clinton. So, of course, she was cool. She it was looking, no yeah, surprise, so, to be honest. To be cool with Margaret Sanger. Well, not be cool with her, but to idolize her. her right? Exactly. So, the this is the, the foundation of which, if you're a black woman, if you're a black feminist, this is the foundation that, you know, you just jumping on a bandwagon for. Like, these right. people really don't fuck with you. And that's the problem is it's like, it's it's, and what happens is it's because before you join a movement, you should probably do your homework. Yes. And everyone I just take wants pictures. to hop on based off of hearsay. You going off with somebody else on Twitter mm-hmm. saying and you're taking it to be law without fact checking. And that's the problem because it's like you're speaking ignorantly if you're not doing your own research. I'm like, I don't know half these people from a can of paint. Even if right. I do, that doesn't mean that what you say is law. So if you bring something out, I'm going to go do my own research before I consider myself affiliated with any exactly. sort of movement. That way, first of all, I'm not out here looking stupid. Right. Second of all, you actually know the history of you know behind this so-called movement that we really aren't a part of. And you can make informed decisions. Like That's crazy to just bandwagon a situation like this right. not knowing that this type of stuff was like designed to be destructive to people like us. Same as the a lot of people. I was, I'm gonna go get flack for this, but the Black Lives Matter movement is the same. It was started by you know no offense to the LGBT community, but it was started by two lesbian women and a gay guy, whatever. But basically, they started it with their movements in mind, but they used that whole victimization of these you know, black people getting murdered by the police to kind of like, okay, yeah, this is... Them, really. Exactly. So if you look on their website, they talk about everybody but the heterosexual black men. Okay? They talk about LGBT stuff. They talk about women's stuff. They talk about, you know, of course, the whole, you know, Black Lives Matter movement as far as the victims being killed right. by the police. But they never talk about anything for our men. And it's like, how can you have an or because feminists don't give a fuck about men. Let's be clear. And I don't I don't feel like the weird part about it is that I don't even understand where this this negative disposition towards men even gain momentum behind the feminist movement because that's really not 
what I would assume or what I would, you know, like, that's well, not I what you want to think. You know, it's one thing to be aggressive towards wanting that equality. Yeah. But you shouldn't have this just completely negative taste in your mouth yeah. when it comes to men. Well, because to white women, I could see how they can have a, a negative disposition about white men. I could see that. But yeah. that don't mean that we should get hop on that bandwagon. Right, Let them fight their it. fight. Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see why. Because they did some fucked up shit. They didn't want them out the house. They didn't want to, them to be to work or have to gain any type of independence. You know, it was pretty much... You're here to but it's cook, like clean, realistically take care of though, like realistically though, it's just like we don't even really have, like historically the re- like the the details regarding that because this is plenty of women who 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 want that lifestyle. That's true. So it's just like who was with it, who was not with it. It's just like the ones who decided they didn't want that lifestyle, or you know, really the mm-hmm. ones who felt oppressed. But it's plenty of women who who have no qualms about sitting on their ass all day in the house <laughs> with them kids, right? And being there for them pregnant in the kitchen. So right. it's just like I don't. Shit. I mean, I'm gonna do a little some little Man. little hobbies, but I, I mean, if you tell me, baby, you got work. nobody <laughs> having that much control over my well, existence. See, so depending on the individual, it yes, depends on the individual. Yeah, but I just feel like I always have to have some degree of independence because if you die tomorrow, it's like yeah. I mean, if you didn't have, I mean, you could have a little something something lined up for me. Yeah, but I mean, like, is that lifetime sustaining? No, I'm gonna have right. to get up and go get a job. Look what I you mean, did. You didn't it's create. 2017. Most people are gonna have to work, but it is good for the woman to have the flexibility to be home because we do have the children and stuff like that. You know, right. and, and I understand. You know, when I had to go back to work, I had to go back to work in like seven weeks after having my daughter. I, I, I wasn't fever. ready. I'm, I was. I was ready. <laughs> I to wasn't go ready. Weeks in, like, look. What can we work out? Because yeah. I can't sit in the house. Like I get cabin fever. Like I was like, look, yeah. like, this little girl. But now I was out for nine weeks. Now them nine yeah. weeks was like, oh my god, I'm itching to get. I would not mind leaving the house, but I would want to have my baby. See, no, I was <laughs> loving her and everything, but it's just like I just needed some individual time. That's true. Like, That's true. And I felt like I wasn't being productive. Weirdly enough, it's like you're rearing a child. That's about as productive as you get because that's yeah, for so that that prosperity. But at the same time. I just felt like I wasn't being productive as an adult, as a human being, like an individual. Mm-hmm. It's just like, I'm just sitting at home all day yeah. and you just get comfortable and I'm just watching all these shows and I'm just mm-hmm. chilling and I'm just like, I need to go get some coins, man. I'm yeah. sitting in the house on, you know what I'm saying, short term disability. Yeah. Like, I need to go get these coins, man. Like, I, I was you. ready to go, but I, I mean, it's, I mean, it's all, it's subjective though. Like, yeah. Everybody's different. You know, I don't think that men should you know, say, this is what you need to be doing. I just think that it's good for men to allow that flexibility if it's wanted, needed, or necessary. You know right. what I'm saying? That's all. But, um, okay, so just to, like, wrap up a little bit, I want to share, and I want you to why black feminism is part of the things that are holding us back. Of course, I'm going to have people in the comment section talking about some. What about this? And what about that? And what about, we're not talking about this. We're talking, about, we're talking about this right now. And that is one of the things holding us back. And that's part of the problem. We can't stay focused. We're exactly. not talking about this. Don't all lives matter in this situation. Please don't. We're not talking. Those issues do exist. We're not addressing them in this show. All right. So let's just stick with what we're right. addressing. And if you want us to address something else, leave something for us, and we'll definitely consider that topic to come on. But um, number one, it separates us from the black men. We don't need no more of that. We had decades and decades and decades and of that. No more division mm-hmm. within our race. Especially if it's, it's totally unnecessary. Um, and it's not our fight. <laughs> it's just again it's not our fight to it's like fight. if you wouldn't just walk past and see two people squaring up on the street and be like and just get in it so You're that's not. essentially what we're doing like hey mind right. your business drink water keep it moving like that's right not and not our... only that is if you jump in they're not it's not like they're gonna what be like oh we got your back up. next time they right. will be like well thank you keep it moving and if you get what if you get punished like in all their... of in somebody else's business now what did you learn <laughs> like you should have just stayed out of it it doesn't yeah. affect us like people would like to think that it is yes and historically the women's movement has excluded um black women from the movement because you look at sandra bland you look at corinne Gaines. i didn't see no i was like what a feminist that when the when these women were out there the footage was they were getting beat up by um 
people, these Asian dudes at these store, beauty supply stores get right. accused of stealing. You don't hear they a don't really steal. You, you know, you don't hear. hear if they're black victims, you don't hear nothing. From the feminist wave, you hear nothing. You hear people. nothing. You know, um, from the sisters in the struggle. Ain't no sisters in the struggle. <laughs> <laughs> not no sister. Right. Like sisters, but you ain't not no sisters. sisters. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, distracts us, it distracts us from black movements. Because like I said, we barely have certain human rights. You know, we were the only group of people who had to fight to be human. Right. No other Honestly, group like, had to fight though. to be considered a whole human. Like literally though. Come on now. Philando Castell just got, the, his murder just got off and he didn't even have the simple uh, second amendment to bear arms. Right. Obviously that didn't and apply it, and to just him. let you know that a lot of these white movements aren't for us because I mean hell the NRA didn't even speak out for him they sure did did not make a single peep nope. regarding him but they don't speak out when nothing is going on about how you're supposed to have your second amendment right to bear arms and protect yourself but you have a licensed individual you know what I'm saying in a vehicle with his firearm completely he did everything compliant he was supposed to everything to do. he was supposed to do mm-hmm. and was murdered pretty much in cold blood and you don't hear a peep from these organizations and he got completely off like all the way and that doesn't yeah. make any sense like yeah. whatsoever but they never do right and we just gotta stop getting fooled into feminism i did a right. show on that uh if you look back on the archives there's another show about that people still not getting they still coming at me like i'm just supposed to uh, uh support some bullshit i'm not i'm never going to support bullshit if i don't believe in it that's and i'm going to try to know what the bullshit is like right. i said it's all it's like if you're not going to take the time to educate yourself on what it is that you're participating in, yeah. you're wasting your time, our time, everybody's time. I really don't want to hear it. Doing research for the show, I was trying to find, like, come on, like, give me something. Give me a reason why black women are kind of just, like, adopting this movement as their own, giving it full support, and they never get that support back. Why? It has to be something. And I just looked at the history all the way to the present, and... It, it wasn't shit. Thing. It wasn't shit. And I be, I'm still trying to convince people. And like I said, they don't even know. I feel like a lot of black women who are doing it, um, they're closet feminists. Because I swear I could not find any. Or they scared. <laughs> Either you're closet feminist or you're scared to um, have a conversation with well, someone you know who knows some facts. They know they're fraud. And that's you the just thing. You take know pictures. you haven't researched it. You know that you don't have the background on it. And you're not going to sit on a platform with right. people who have and try to defend your position because you don't have a foundation under that position on right. what you're saying. So I can understand not being able to find someone because, I mean, I'm not surprised at all. Yeah. It's literally like a whole bunch of fluff, you know, un- uh, underneath a lot of aggression and a lot of anger and a lot yeah. of bitterness. And I'm like, if that's what you feel like feminism is, um, you're, hey, yeah. more power to you. I'm going to sit this party out. Like, I don't, I, don't, yeah. I want no barks. All right, yeah, let us know what you think about this. I mean, it was a good convo. I really wish we had some type of um, opposite POV, but, I mean, you can always, you know, follow us on social media, have a conversation, and it's not that you will get attacked. I don't know if people are afraid of getting attacked because I don't even... Um, I, I could do the show professionally. You know what I'm saying? We can have a back to back. I'm gonna just come with the facts. You got come with some yeah, facts. Yeah, what too. it is is when your the basis of your belief system is unfounded. You're always gonna be, you know, on the defensive yeah. when somebody questions it or comes at you with some receipts. Yeah. You're always gonna be on the defensive because I'm saying, have some fire receipts. I'm gonna have some fire receipts, <laughs> and we will have some fire receipts. Yeah. And that's all we want to die alone. It's gonna get canceled out, and then it's gonna be like you're gonna end up on our side by the end of the show. Oh, so. Right. <laughs> people not ready to switch their point of view. Well, thank y'all for coming to church with us because y'all know <laughs> black, right? <laughs> black empowerment is my religion. You know what hey. I'm saying? And this is like church. So, you know, thank y'all for uh, watching that. Thank, thank y'all for tuning in and um, we'll catch you on the next episode of, of the Supreme Show Live. We got some bomb topics. So subscribe. Oh my God, the topics. <laughs> oh my God. I really want to release the topics. Like, I want to really, I've asked them to everybody. I want to release some, them. Some commercials. But low key, I feel like people are going to try to steal my, steal our shit. It's cool. I don't want people that to try to steal our shit. It's very but cool. I got some fire coming back, coming for y'all. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for the next upcoming episodes and we will see you next week.